Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to worship today. My name is Gail Ray, and I'm the pastor here at Mosny UMC. This week, we're continuing our Places of the Passion Worship series. This week, we go out to Bethpage, the place where the ride into Jerusalem and the donkey begins for Jesus. It's here where we discover that Jesus is a humble king who serves as he heads toward the cross. A big thank you to Amy and Kaylee for providing our music today there in the chapel. And um, I invite you to enter into worship with their beautiful music. The opening song is How Great Is Our God by Chris Tom. Our last week video dealt with Jesus' trial on the morning of Good Friday. Today, we're going back in time to the beginning of Holy Week and the first Palm Sunday. 
when Jesus made his triumphant entry into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey, down the Mount of Olives from the village of Bethpage. As you can see here on our map, we have the village of Bethpage on the edge of the map on the Mount of Olives, which runs parallel to Jerusalem. And here he would have ridden down the mountain from there. <clears throat> Even today, Christians gather on the top of the Mount of Olives on Palm Sunday and have a joyful palm parade down the steep hillside road. In fact, in Mosinee UMC, we're having our own Palm Sunday parade this Sunday, March 28th at 10.30 a.m. and everyone is welcome to join in. We'll have palms and music and balloons and signs, a wonderful parade around the block of the church. So please drive by at 10.30 on Sunday and join in. I invite you now to get out one of your tea candles, lay it flat on circle seven, and you can label it Beth Page. I forgot to label your maps if you'd like. Let's join together in our Eunice and Lenten reading for today. Let us walk with Jesus to gaze upon the heights of his grace. We walk with Jesus as he rides a donkey, beginning in Bethpage and making his way to Jerusalem, and as he does it for us, for our salvation. I invite you now to light your candle and circle seven for Bethpage while I light the Christ candle. And then we'll join together in our unison response. Faithful Lord, abide with us so we can follow where you lead. Amen. Our opening hymn is Hosanna by Hillsong United.
Please join me in prayer as we focus on our worship theme for today. Let us pray. Merciful God, as the people of Jerusalem with palms in hand gathered to greet your son when he came into their city, grant that we may hail him as our king and walk with him in the way that leads to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading for today is a passage from Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 through 10, one of, the, one of the traditional Palm Sunday scriptures. It's titled, The Coming Ruler of God's People. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim, and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be cut off, and he will command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today is Palm Sunday as we begin our walk in Bethpage, a village on the Mount of Olives. At Bethpage, Jesus rides into Jerusalem, back into the fight with the scribes and the Pharisees, the high priest and the Romans, knowing that he will die. In fact, he's been telling this to his disciples for quite a while now, but they still don't get it. Let's hear Matthew's version of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. I'm reading Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. When they come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, colt the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They put the donkey in the colt, they brought the donkey in the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Did you notice the reaction to Jesus' arrival? When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? Who is this? That's the question for 
Palm Sunday. That's a question for the ages. Who is Jesus? If we get this right, we get everything right. But if we get this wrong, we get everything else wrong. Who is Jesus? Some say Jesus is a therapist. He helps us cope with life's problems, tells us how valuable we are, and encourages us not to be too hard on ourselves. Some say Jesus is a coffee lover. He drinks fair trade coffee at Starbucks, loves spiritual conversations, and goes to film festivals. Some say Jesus is a coach. He helps Christian athletes run faster and jump higher than non-Christian athletes. Some say Jesus is a hippie. He says, give peace a chance. Imagine the world without religion. And remember, all you need is love. Some say Jesus is a spiritual guru. He says, get out in nature, oh, and find the God in your inner self. Some say Jesus is a revolutionary. He teaches us to rebel against the status quo, to stick it to the man, and to blame everything on the system. Some say Jesus is a good example. He shows us how to change the planet and help little old ladies cross the street. And finally, there is the famous plastic Jesus. And you might know this song from Paul Newman's movie, Cool Hand Luke. I won't sing it for you, but here's one of the most famous lines. I don't care if it rains or freezes, as long as I got my plastic Jesus sitting on the dashboard of my car. A plastic Jesus believer sees Jesus as a good luck charm, a rabbit's foot, a four-leaf clover, someone they can turn to when they need a favor. But who we all need, instead of these cultural stereotypes, is the real Jesus. This is who the Gospel of Matthew helps us to get to know. Who is Jesus? Matthew tells us over and over again. To begin with, Jesus is our humble king who serves, as we saw in the beginning of the reading for today. Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. In this example from scripture, Jesus employs the law of royal levy, which gave a king authority to get anything from anyone at any time. The Lord needs them. In fact, Jesus, the humble king who serves, was predicted by the prophet Zechariah, who's quoted in Matthew 21, verse 5. Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Riding on a donkey instead of a larger, grander horse demonstrates that Jesus comes to wash feet, not bark orders, Jesus comes to love, forgive, and shed tears, not dominate and intimidate. Jesus comes to stretch out his arms on the cross for us and for our salvation, not marshal an army for destruction and war. 
This divine king became poor so that through his poverty we might become rich beyond our wildest imaginations. Now a king like that is worth shouting about. But that's not all. Jesus is also a king who saves, as verse 9 explains. The crowds went ahead of him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Hosanna means save us now. Couple that with the palm branches, an ancient sign of victory, and who does that tell us Jesus is? Jesus is a mighty king who saves. True. Jesus is a humble king who serves, but Jesus is also a mighty king that provides our salvation, our resurrection, and even defeated death. But that's not all. Jesus is also a radical prophet who shakes the city. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil asking, who is this? Prophets do that. Prophets shake things up, and we need it, don't we? Otherwise, we can become last, lackluster, lethargic, listless, and lukewarm in our faith. So we need Jesus and the Holy Spirit to shake us up. In fact, several of the Old Testament prophets were very famous for shaking things up, by following the word of God. You might find this humorous, I did. Isaiah walked around naked for three years. Jeremiah buried his used loincloth by the Euphrates River and later dug it up. And Hosea married a prostitute named Gomer and had children with her. <clears throat> when I remember these biblical stories, I'm grateful that so far God hasn't called me to be a prophet. I think that would be a really challenging thing. And Jesus? What did Jesus do to shake things up? Jesus ate with tax collectors, prostitutes, and sinners. Jesus honored and respected women and children. Jesus touched and healed lepers even healing on the Sabbath. And at the end of his life, Jesus allowed people to spit on him, beat him, and crucify him. Describing his death, Matthew 27 states, the earth shook and the rocks were split. But there would be more shaking. Describing Easter, Matthew 28 states, and suddenly there was a great earthquake. The crucified one isn't dead. He is risen. That shakes up everything. The resurrection means Jesus is who he says he is. Jesus is our radical prophet who shakes up the city. Jesus is the risen Messiah. Who is Jesus? And more specifically, who is Jesus to me? This could be the most important question you ever ask yourself. And Holy Week is a perfect opportunity to spend some time, apart from your normal routine, to really think about this. Who is Jesus to you? You know who Jesus is to me because I have the chance to preach about him either directly or indirectly every week. To me, Jesus is the humble king, savior and prophet, son of God and son of man, one of the persons of the Trinity along with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the one waiting to bring me home when my time here on earth is over and who will one day return in final victory to redeem all of creation. Jesus is 
my Lord and Savior, and I am his disciple. But I ask you today, who is Jesus to you? Who is Jesus to you? I encourage you to pray about your understanding of and relationship with Jesus this week. What I know is that he is recklessly in love with you and everyone else in the world. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are our King, the King of glory, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords. Great is our rejoicing, for you have come to us righteous and victorious, loving and sovereign. By the riches of your grace, continue to free us from sin, selfishness, and worthless idols. By the power of your gospel, enable us to live with hope. And as agents of redemption, until the day you return, to finish making all things new. Amen. Our next song is Sweet, Sweet Sound by Sarah Reeves. This next song is just a reminder that we are a reflection of God's love in our lives. I am an instrument of the living God. My life a melody to his name. More than the songs I sing, worship is everything. I live to glorify my King. Hear the song of my life. Let it be a sweet, sweet song. Let it be a sweet, sweet song. Now enter into our time of the Lord's Supper. I invite you to join in the response and to receive the elements of bread and cup at your own home. On the night when Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread. 
and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper is over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here today and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ, given for you. Amen. And the blood of Christ, shed for you. Amen. <coughs> Our closing song for today is Reckless Love by Corey Asbury.
receive this blessing, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and all days. Go forth in peace, being the light of Jesus in the world. Amen.